Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do another video today on our eucalyptus bowl. Um, now last episode we started smoothing down the sides with our straight gouge um, and today I'm going to be using this which is my smoothing gouge. Um, it's made by Hans Carlson, really really nice little gouge. Um, I'll give you a quick close up here um, and as you can see this has got quite a narrow sweep on it. Um, so what this will allow us to do is start smoothing down these sides um, in a much less aggressive manner than the previous gouge. Um, and I'm hoping that by the end of this episode I can get this bowl smoothed down, at least on the inside, um, well enough that I won't have to sand it. Now it's not something I'm particularly good at, I'll be honest, um, but you know I don't often leave a tooled finish. I, I like to sand things and have them completely smooth. But I'm thinking with this, maybe I'll try and keep it a bit more rustic. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the camera a bit closer in in a second. Um, similar to the last couple of episodes, you know, it's quite a lengthy, laborious um, process and it's very repetitive. So I'm just gonna move the camera around a little bit while I'm going on. Um, and just sort of show you from different angles and kind of what I'm doing. Right then guys, so here's where I'm going to start and as I say we're using our smoothing gouge. Um, now obviously you, hopefully you can see from here there's quite a lot of sort of fairly fine tool marks in this, nothing too bad, I mean it could leave it exactly like this, um, but I want to try and smooth it down a bit more. Um, and what I was going to say is that when you're using a smoothing gouge like this you don't want to be putting loads of pressure on, you don't want to be really gouging into it. Um, and for, to start with, I mean you will find um, that when you do start using the gouge it will be pretty tough to begin with you know you won't get nice sweeping cuts with the gouge um, and what I tend to do is using really no pressure at all just guiding it down backwards and forwards motion um, just picking up the high spots and what you'll find is that once you've done that for I don't know 30 seconds or so you will have smoothed down sort of an area um, hopefully that picks up on the camera just there and once you've got it sort of relatively smooth you then start getting that kind of f more fluid motion you, and as I say you don't need to put much pressure on this at all um, the problem with pressure when you're trying to smooth things down is that the pressure will create, or, or the more pressure you use, the deeper the cut. The deeper the cut, all you're really doing is putting more tool marks in. So this really is just a process of trying to take off high spots where you find them, and once you've removed all those high spots, you should get that nice kind of sweep, which I'm not quite getting at the moment. There you go, there's one. And it really is just a case of sort of, you know, slow and steady wins the race on this one. So again, this area here, and I don't know how well that's picking up on the camera there, it's certainly already a lot smoother than this. It still needs some work. And again, this is where kind of the real fine tuning and control comes in. And really all you're doing is sort of running it down and as it picks up a high spot it will then cut away that little bit and eventually and I say this is quite a long tedious process but it, it, it is worth the effort I find and you'll be you'll end up with a nice smooth flat area um, the other thing you can do with a bowl like this is coming from the side and you can kind of work along this way. Now again, it all depends on what type of wood you're using and whether the grain will allow you to do it. I usually find that on the sides of a bowl, coming from the top and working downwards works really well. When it comes to the ends of the bowl, and I'll use this one as an example, trying to come down this way, although it does work, um, I tend to find that coming in from an angle works a little bit better here. Um, I'm not quite sure why that is. I think it's just the way that the wood grain goes. Um, and again, the, the difficulty here is joining the sides up to the end, but we'll get to that a little bit later.
One of the other things I wanted to say about this, guys, is that once you've got an area started, so we've got this little strip here that hopefully is picking up as a slightly different colour on the camera. Once you've actually got this um, sort of on the go, you're, it's very, very easy to move from an area that you've started to smooth down to one you haven't worked on yet. So really, it's just that initial sort of first strip, if you like, that you need to spend that bit of extra time on. And once you've done that, it's then very easy to move from your smoothed surface to one that you're ready to, uh, not yet to work on. So as you can see, you saw a moment ago, you know, it took us a little bit of a time, a little, little while to get this started. And now moving on to the next sections, you're basically just following your line along. Um, and it does make the whole process a lot easier. Right then guys, so I've got as far as the end of this side of the bowl. Um, and as I said earlier, coming down from the top down this way doesn't tend to work brilliantly with a smoothing gouge. Um, so obviously coming down from here on the sides, absolutely fine, no problem. As soon as you start getting around to here, you start kind of jamming up and you can see all these chatter marks in the wood here. Um, and what I find is actually easier to come around rather than from down to, from the top. Um, and the way I do that is I start from the bottom and work my way up. Um, it's generally a lot easier to follow the sweep at the bottom first of all. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is coming along with sort of a sweeping curve from this side. And it will take you to normally just past sort of the halfway mark so you can come around the other way when you do the other side. And as you start smoothing out that bottom piece, making sure it continues in the same line as this wall. As you start getting the bottom pieces carved away, you can then start working your way up the top of the bowl and sort of keeping that curve continuous all the way around. Right then guys, so the last thing I want to do today is where we've been smoothing down the walls, and there is still a little bit of work left to do, but that's fine. Um, I just want to get the walls joined into the bottom of the bowl, and hopefully it's picking up on camera here okay. You've got marks down here and marks on this side where the bottom of the bowl um, is slightly raised, um, where obviously the gouge has come down and kind of stopped. Um, and this really is quite a slow process, and what you need to do is just very gently rest your gouge, maybe not sort of vertically, but sort of with a little bit of an angle, and just applying very light pressure, you just take off that kind of top edge. If you start trying to go right from the very edge of this, you'll find that you'll get splintering and you'll get pieces break off that you don't want to. So really, you're just very carefully taking off those upper edges, and every time you do that, um, Bear with me. Every time you do that, you're, you're sort of making this depression slightly shallower, so you will eventually get to the very bottom edge and you'll be kind of um, it's almost blending the wall down into the bottom of the bowl. And hopefully you can see here, where are we? These are really, really thin shavings now, and that's exactly what you're looking for. Um, but as I say, you don't want to force this part you really just want to take it very, very slowly. And you will find, like that just did, you'll get a couple of bits that will kind of try to snap off. And that's fine, it's not a problem. You just need to kind of take your gouge off, start working a little bit higher than you were, and you'll gradually be taking this down bit by bit. Right then guys, well that's it for today. Um, I'll give you a bit of a close up in some slightly better light. So hopefully you can see that. It's a lot, lot smoother than it was earlier today. Um, and that's where I'm gonna leave it for the time being, I think. Um, that's pretty much the bowl finished now, um, at least until it's dried out and I decide whether or not I'm going to sand it. Um, what I may actually do is, once it has dried out sufficiently, and we would have made some more progress on the actual bowl by then anyway, um, I may come back with my smoothing gouge um, and just see if I can knock off some of those tool marks, take away some of those um, 
little indentations and ridges in there once it's dried. Um, if not, I'll probably revert back to the old faithful and just give it a quick sand. Um, so that's it for today. Um, as usual, hope it was useful. Comments and questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Thanks, guys.